And here we go. This is Flash at 20% off on the 4th of July. Ha ha ha. 2019. My uh, personal, what is this, 7th consecutive 4th of July away from 4th of July land. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm from the land of screaming meanies. Uh, California. Whoop, whoop. Anyway. So tonight we have for your le- your uh, typing entertainment on the reallibertymedia.com chat room provided to you by Grimner. Thanks, Grim. We've got the barman, Beetle Cowboy Tech, Grimner, Moose Girl, DC Brackets, Anti Asmo, Graham Z, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow. Miss Kate, Rob Works, Romes, Van White, Weather Dork, Woodman, Phantom, and well then, that's Mike from Salt Lake City. Ha! Circle! Hey, hello, honey. Cyborg Noodle, myself. Frumped, Frumpy, representing Canada. Gromit, huh? Jays, Nines, Jays from the other place. Kiss, kiss underscore, ponder, gander, pwned, saw, sock puppet, and smod as. And that's the lineup for your typing enjoyment tonight. My tonight, your today. Maybe not, depends on when you listen to this crazy stuff. But tonight we've got the 4th of July. And that means blowing shit up and screaming and yelling and drinking and being fucking wonderful. But I don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, nobody's celebrating anything over here. And in fact, just, just to make things even more comfortable for me, it rained. <laughs> so, how appropriate. But I'm not a big flag raving, uh, America loving guy. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. Anyway, so tonight, I seen Grim put up a link earlier, or maybe it was Grim. I don't know, but when I was coming on, it was somebody's evening. And I saw them put up. uh Uh-oh. Let's see if I saved the damn thing. Uh, Maybe not. I thought I might have saved it, but I didn't. Oh, no. But uh, what I do have. No, this is it. This is the link I'm looking for. I just couldn't remember what it was entitled. But I got to put a copy of. For your reading perusal. That way you know what's going on. Because sometimes the radio is just not enough. So we post it in the reallibertymedia.com chat. And then sometimes whoever's reading it. We've been known to abandon a link. Part, part way through it and just jump to something different. Because this radio is free and you don't have commercials. You just got us. Entertaining you with our brilliant <laughs> and hey thanks hon. and then I got a lick sore from the wife ho 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 uh, anyway so tonight on 20% off we're going to remind you of your 4th of July with a 4th of July tale entitled time to declare your independence from tyranny America and uh, it was written let me see by a fella by the name of Tyler Durden. I think that's a fella. Looks like a fella. Could be just a picture of a guy and it could be a girl that wrote it. We don't know these things anymore. That America's taken, taken a, a twist. And some places, well, some places people are toasters. Or whatever nonsense they decide they want to go with. So, tonight's epic tale about America is authored by whoa no it says by T- Tyler Durden and then says authored by John Whitehead via the Rutherford Institute so hmm it's kind of interesting how they do all this stuff ah, and just skip to the main meat of the story it says here for too long now we have suffered the injustices of a government that has no regard for our rights or our humanity. Wow, too easily, too, 
too easily pacified and placated by the pomp and pageantry of manufactured spectacles, uh, fireworks on the 4th of July, military parades, ritualized elections, etc. that are a poor substitute for a representative government that respects the rights of its people. The American people have opted time and again to overlook the government's excesses, abuses, and power grabs that fly in the face of every principle for which America's founders risked their lives. Good point. Ooh, this is probably making everybody want to wave a flag, go out and shoot something. Uh, back to the story. We have done this to ourselves. Indeed, it is painfully fitting that mere days before the nation prepared to celebrate its freedoms on the anniversary of the Declaration of Independence, the City Council for Charlottesville, Virginia, the home of Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration, voted to do away with a holiday to honor Jefferson's birthday. Because Jefferson, like many of his contemporaries, owned slaves. City councilors have opted instead to celebrate Liberation and Freedom Day in honor of slaves who were emancipated after the Civil War. <laughs> this is like science fiction. Um, hold on. Tyler Durden, this is a little message to me from Mr. Grimner on the main feed of the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. And it says, Tyler Durden is actually a group of folks that post on Zero Hedge. Okay, thank you, Grimner. I don't keep up with all the details. And it makes reading stuff a lot more fun when I don't know half that half of what I'm doing. And then it gives you something to do when you're sitting there and you go, Hey, I know the answer to that. <laughs> it's like playing trivia. You're just ad you're addicted to the right answer, Grim. It's not your fault. Okay, back to my epic tale. <clears throat> This is what we have been reduced to. Bureaucrats dithering over meaningless trivialities while the government goose steps all over our freedoms. Too often we pay lip service to those freedoms. Yet they did not come about by happenstance. They were hard won through sheer determination, suffering and sacrifice by thousands of patriotic Americans who did not who not only believed in the cause of freedom, but also had the intestinal fortitude to act on that belief. The success of the American Revolution owes much to these men and women. Right, but now if you were to do anything physical towards the government to resist them, uh, they'd just shoot you. That's what I think. From the you know police links that I've been seeing and I guess the decay of the military over the years. Because once upon a time, I mean, when the world was bigger and people relied on word of mouth and ink and didn't have, you know, friends in foreign countries that could put on shit that's going on on their phone and put it live on the internet. <laughs> Things changed a little bit. But uh, the decay has set in so well. They got, like, Portland's on fire with these idiots from Antifa. Antifa, <laughs> Antifa, what a dumb name for a, for a violent thug organization, they sound like a, like a ballet troupe, but they're doing damage, and, and they pick on, uh, they pick on people that aren't involved in the fight to prove that they're tough, they, they, <laughs> they seem, well, I guess they faced off with the proud boys, whatever that means, but I don't know, what's all the violence for when you think it through? Right, to keep the police in the job, and uh, from what I read, the cops aren't doing much about it. They were told to stand down, <laughs> and Joe Public does still yet. How few of us know that the SCOTUS ruled the police have no duty to protect you. So, hold on to that little idea, and we'll get back to my epic tale about the Fourth of July and other stuff. And it goes like this. Uh, in standing up to the British Empire and speaking out against an oppressive regime, 
They exemplified courage in the face of what seemed like an overwhelming foe. Indeed, imagine living in a country where armed soldiers crash through doors to arrest and imprison citizens merely for criticizing government officials. Like they're trying to bring into Congress to vote on it so that if you do that on the, the online shit, then they want to put you in jail for being rude. <laughs> Wow, man, bring back dueling and get rid of all these sissy fucking weirdos that are in politics now. You know, start shooting each other, and I'll tell you one thing. The people that step up for the freaking job, they got balls. They might not know what the fuck's going on, but they'll be tough fucking guys. <laughs> Maybe a few women, too. And I'm not just saying you're bull dykes with your, you know, your whips and your chains and shit. I'm talking to regular females that have learned how to shoot over a lifetime yeah. so i think life is a perfectly balanced even playing field and there is no fucking difference between men and women outside of well i'll fuck women but <laughs> that's outside of that that's that's the only difference that is absolute in the uh, male female you know quest in my life but uh I don't know, maybe I'm just too simple-minded for the complicated 21st century or something. So <laughs> I'll get back to my I'll get back to my story. But be warned, I I do interrupt with tales of my own shit when I read these uh, links that we have available to us on the internet. On the internet webs for everybody to see. So let's see if I can figure out where I left off and try to pick up Okay, keep in mind that if you have a firearm of any kind or anything that resembled a firearm while in this country, it may get you arrested and in some circumstances shot by police. If you're thinking this sounds like America today, you wouldn't be far wrong. However, the scenario described above took place more than 200 years ago. When American colonists suffered under Great Britain's version of an early police state, it was only when the colonists finally got fed up with being silenced, censored, searched, frisked, threatened, and arrested that they finally revolted against the tyrants' fetters. Wow, there's some pretty cool words in this one. No document better states their grievances than the Declaration of Independence. Drafted by that losing guy, Thomas Jefferson, that they're not going to remember anymore. They're just going to forget all about him because that prick, well, he owns some slaves. Oh, yeah, I bet he wore some fucking wigs, too, because uh, at the time in history, according to what we see in pictures and read, wigs were the thing. So, hmm. I mean, you know, you do what's... That's what's ridiculous about... Uh, trying to mix all these cultures together and come up with a one-size-fits-all and then blame your today on the past 250 years ago. This guy did this, so you're going to pay for it. <laughs> what a bunch of morons we live amongst. Some, somebody get, some, get the fluoride out of the fucking water. You're killing these people. <laughs> okay, back. stop. Fuck it. Okay, back over it. Back to epic, epic story. Okay. See if I can find where I left off. The result, our Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments to the Constitution. Imagine the shock and outrage these 56 men would feel were they to discover that 243 years later, the government they had risked their lives to create has been transformed into a militaristic police state in which exercising one's freedoms at a minimum, merely questioning a government agent, is often viewed as a Flagrant act of defiance. Wow, boy, I'm telling you. I don't know if you guys are listening tonight, but wow. I'm impressing myself with this great knowledge I'm acquiring. Because I didn't know all this. I thought it. <laughs> I think a lot of stuff. but uh, hmm. Okay, the danger is real. We could certainly use some of that revolutionary outrage today. Oh, they're inciting some violence here. They want, they want blood. Certainly, 
we would do well to pre to reclaim the revolutionary spirit of our ancestors and remain and remember what drove them to such drastic measures in the first place yeah but see today we could do it with money but you, you can't you need large groups millions of people to cooperate with it and not buy things don't buy this product for two days and till these prices go down we're not gonna <laughs> i mean these people got billions of fucking dollars and they uh they insist on shortchanging us on the wage thing and then charging an arm and a leg for the crap that we have to buy to survive so you know it, if you want to fight, you fight with money, you fight with ideas, you fight with um, other people that know what you're talking about, but violence is not going to work this time. The weaponry and the communications, too, it's too advanced. Just the threat of it is enough to scare most people into submission right there. I'm going to do whatever you say because I don't want you to shoot me. And that's the way we are. When push comes to shove, I think most people cower. Mm. Now, back to my epic tale of the Bill of Rights and other th such interesting things. The Constitution, freedom, you know, all that crap that nobody really wants. Uh, now, they're, yeah, they were calling out, basically calling out for war, in my opinion. Certainly, we would do well to reclaim the revolutionary spirit of our ancestors and remember what drove them to such drastic measures in the first place. Then again, perhaps what we need to do is declare our independence from the tyranny of the American police state. It's not a radical idea. It has been done before. The Declaration of Independence speaks volumes about the abuses suffered by early Americans at the hands of the British police state. Read the Declaration of Independence again and ask yourself if the list of complaints tallied by Jefferson's don't bear a startling resemblance to the abuses we the people are suffering at the hands of the American police state. Ah, my dog wants to say hello to everybody, if you can hear her. She's giving you guys, that's a Danish dog, barking for your hearing entertainment. Hmm. Poor Hannah, she doesn't, I, I didn't raise her very well. I didn't uh, insist on all that training, and I figure she's a dog. What, what's the worst she's going to do? Tear something up when she's little, and then you teach them not to do that. They usually listen. Just take a newspaper and slap it in your hand is just as frightening to the dog as hitting the dog. A lot of people don't, you know, they don't really think about that. But I do because when I was a kid, my father used to go all happy all over me. So for me to hit other things now is kind of difficult. I have to think about it before I can do it. So I find other ways to take care of a dog. And uh, years ago, somebody said, hey, do this. And I went, oh, hey, and it worked. So if something works, that's what I do. I try not to do the shit that don't work over and over. I save that, you know, for the stuff that works. Meanwhile, back on the story. Hmm. Uh, da -da. Read the... Uh, da -da. If you find the purple prose used by the founders hard to decipher... Ah, here's my translation of what the Declaration of Independence would look and sound like if it were written in the modern vernacular. I'm probably not going to read all that, but I just wanted to get to the point of there's people out here and in print, they're putting it out, you know, they want change, serious. You know, they're showing you it's been done before. They're insisting, pay attention to what is going on. This is... Forced inoculations mandated by Mother State for the good of everybody. And there's a list of people that have been treated really badly by these uh, inoculation people and hurt and killed. So, you know, it, hmm, they've taken away your ability to choose for yourself and they're telling you. So, hmm, something's going to shift. Or maybe not. Maybe people will just buckle down and take whatever they've got to take. 
take it up the butt for the good of all the people. That, you know, that's the cry they'll be chanting in the streets, you know, while they're waving their colored flags and sporting their little jockey straps and shit. Trying to turn all the kids into a bunch of fags so they won't reproduce and all this other crap. It's just insanity, because I remember growing up myself, and believe me, the first 11 or 12 years wasn't too much about girls. It wasn't about boys. It was just about growing up. And 12 hit, then things changed. <laughs> but, uh, so all this intervention in kids' lives before they're, you know, even capable of thinking for their self completely. I mean, 11, 12, right in there, you start to develop a little bit of common sense and, you know, know what will get you through so you don't get in trouble and shit like that. But before that, and then they got these little children, you know, acting like teenagers. It's not good for, to, for me to see. Maybe you like it. Hmm. Now, to me, that's child abuse because I was kind of raised with, you know, go outside and play, make something. Here's a garage full of tools and all kinds of stuff. Go have fun, make whatever you want. And I always had a good you know, good bicycle in good condition to ride and all that. Could always fix anything that went wrong with it. Little things like that when I was growing up that were important. And now, <clears throat> where I live, I see the same kind of thing. A lot of people on bicycles here. For one, it's small. You know, and having a car, <laughs> it's, it's nice, I guess, but... It doesn't really save you all that much time around here to go to where there is to go to do what there is to do. Unless you're in a big, you know, in, in a, you're representing five people. But me and Cirque, I can go to the store every other day for me and her all by myself, you know. And, uh, keep us in fresh stuff. And then she's got the garden growing in the backyard, too. Maybe I'll have her take some shots. She's a better photographer than I am. And then I let, get to let her pick what she wants to show off because they're her plants, basically. You know, put some on realliberty.org. And uh, if you follow the show, that's the, so a little site that Grim and Ant and uh, Bo have. And it needs a little traffic. <clears throat> People from the RLM should go over there and start using it and pump up the numbers and get some traffic going, like Vinny did with... Uh, when we were trying to get 100 people on, <laughs> uh, what what is it, subscribed, ended up with like three 300 and something. Because uh, it's all about promoting yourself, you know, because what, what we have to say as a collective, I think, in, in the group, you know, the, on the radio is pretty much all the same. Just different expressions of that sameness, you know. The government ain't so great. You know, be responsible for yourself and stop depending on the government to do everything for you. And it's a lot harder to do than it is to say. Oh, everybody can say it, but how many people can do it? I can't do it because I'm married to Cirque. But if the tables were turned and we were living in the States, i do just fine, just what I've always done. And, uh, hmm. I don't see a problem, but Cirque doesn't really want to live in the United States. So, I'm spitting my 4th of July reading all this crazy stuff about it's time to declare your independence again, people. <clears throat> now, this isn't my opinion. I don't disagree with it so much, but not because it's my opinion. I'm just saying that there's not... For, there's, you can only go so far down before something's going to end. Now, maybe it's you know my, my own personal life experiences that give me this understanding of what I'm looking at it and seeing it in the light I'm seeing it in. And you can avoid all the violence if you just collectively start boycotting things as a group. Groups. 10,000, 100,000, a million, <laughs> 10 million. <laughs> you imagine if 10 million people said, we're not buying Coke until you take the shit out of it. How fast they'd take the shit out of it. It would be probably overnight because 
uh, or maybe this whole game would collapse if you just pulled a little, you know, collective muscle. And instead of all this violence and riots, protesting and all that, just have a boycott. That's it. It's your whole message. I ain't going to buy this. ain't going to buy that. ain't going to buy this. There you go. And by saying that, you're not in... You're not inciting anybody. You're insulting a, co a corporation, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's applicable. You know, you can punish me by law for boycotting, only if you Jew. The Jews will have your ass if you boycott their shit. So what we do is we talk about it openly while we still can before the Noahide laws hit, and we tell our fellow anarchist scum out there in the free world, you know. The, the people that know they're trapped, but just hanging on to that bit of mental freedom from it. Because half of it, it, it's all in your head in the first place. But to support it and, you know, go for all the hoopla, I don't know. I think that's that's an important, an important part of breaking away from it, is letting go of all the, the, gli the glimmer and the, the glitz. All the good-looking shit that's really bad for you. But it, it's entertaining, so what do you do? Now, they've got um, all kinds of different crap in, in the movies, in the radio, in the music. However you listen, however you take in your, your hearing information. It's manipulated. And it's delivered on a terrible frequency too I think that's the right word is that the right word um, anybody that's listening Grand Moose and uh, Rome's the uh, the the cycle that it's delivered on what do you call that stuff again hmm. uh, but it's supposed to be it's at 420 and it's eh, I I'm ahead of them on the chat so I probably won't get an answer until I've gone way beyond this point but anyway the point still remains whether I can repeat the numbers correctly out of memory or not is we, everything that we get electronically delivered to us is done in the cheapest possible way for the system to create the most possible revenue. And it's a hard subject to explain to anybody. I know so little about it in the first place, but I've got the basics, you know, I understand the basics of it. I just compare it to my myself. If I eat this food instead of that food, I will get a less of a result from this than that. Simple. And we're the same way, but we're we're like that on areas of uh, energy that we consume that drives us somehow. We're not taught about this stuff. You got to look on the internet now if you want to learn anything. But at least the difference is now you don't have to. Uh, go to the library and search and you got a button in front of you and you can click click and open open now once you open up something then the chances of it <laughs> being the, the true side of the coin is 50 50 maybe it's hard to tell but uh i was talking with grimner the other day and i'm gonna abandon the uh it's time to declare your independence uh, it's already the 4th of July. I don't want to make you guys feel any worse. Whoops, I opened up the wrong thing, too. Uh, I don't want to make you feel worse about your holiday. That wasn't my goal. It's just, I guess what I was trying to do is make a point that there are people out there that, given their way, would put a drastic change into this whole thing. And they're coming. And it might take a while, but... It, Little by little, more and more daily, I keep seeing and hearing more and more people resisting what they're looking at, giving it a, a little argument on the internet. So I came to that money thing. Based on the, uh, the reactions I'm seeing from that Antifa and the Proud Boys thing in Portland and the cops... See, the cops are, uh, like I've told everybody on the uh, RLM forever, they know. The SCOTUS said the cops don't have to do shit for you. And the state proved it by telling the cops to stand down. While people were driving and being physically attacked, 
They could have stopped it, but they didn't. What does that tell you? I don't know. What it tells me isn't very good. I don't want to ever go to Portland. Thank you very much. That used to be a nice city. I used to wander around Portland all the time when I was a kid. Now, my wife wouldn't want to go there with me. I mean, uh, the world is, is cooking in you know where I'm from so badly that... If I brought up, hey, I want to go home, she wouldn't want to go, no matter what I said to her. I'd have to take kicking and screaming against her will because we're married. And that wouldn't be a you know, fair position to put anybody in. So, hmm. And But I'm sitting here on the 4th of, you know, 4th of July because I remember growing up with all that 4th of July fireworks. and I never really cared for it when I was a kid either. I'm not big on the whooping it up, fireworks, and loud noise, and all that. I like loud bands, but not not just noise for the sake of hearing noise. That is just a little bit confusing to my little brain. But, I'm not necessarily going to read this. But, I've been discussing this book, or this book, this movie I've seen called Tesla, Man Out of Time. And I was talking with Grimner about it the other day. He was helping me out with something on the uh, radio stuff. And he managed to find a copy of this. I'm not going to read this on the program. But I am going to post it in the RLM for if there's any Tesla fans out there. You get bored and you do like to read when you got nothing to do. I recommend this. It's excellent. And, uh... It, I haven't finished it yet, but it's. I can't remember seeing the, the film in, in the 80s when I watched it completely. So the text in the story is going to remind me of stuff, but I can't swear this is exactly this, the same story. But uh, hmm. Tesla's life is pretty, it was pretty well documented for, I guess for us to be told about. It's just nobody bothered to do any telling. They hid him from us like he was a virus. Now, Marconi that got credited for the radio, was a stu- he was a student of Tesla's. He worked with him. And uh, Tesla didn't really want to bother with the radio thing, so he gave it off to Marconi. And what Marconi did was claim that it was his work. And in, I think, 1948... If I'm correct, I might be wrong, but I read somewhere. See, I I read things, so mm, they're etched in my memory, but proving them, I wasn't around in 1948. So I have to look it up somewhere. But Marconi was uh, not the inventor of the radio. But in 1968, when I was going to school, the book said Marconi was the inventor of the radio. Hmm. Oh, no, uh, what, uh, huh, no, it's Flash smoking cigs with hash. No, I, I got a little pipe tonight. I just got my little one hitter for the show. Get me through the show, baby. And I got a, I got a butt from, from the spliff I had with my wife before the show. But, uh, no, I don't, um, let's see. Ooh, <laughs> Fireworks, fireworks, fireworks. They're, t- oh, they're chitter-chattering on the uh, reallibertymedia.com chat right now. But uh, anyway, my fascination with Tesla is probably different than everybody else's, or I would assume. But if you have a spark, you know, you're curious about him, or you already know, don't w- let it bother you. But for the new people that have uh, not really seen where, where Tesla came from in, and what he accomplished in his life, and what the system did to hide him from us, and hide his his uh, discoveries and inventions, and then credit that freaking Edison, that worthless creep. It was a in my mind. I, I what I've seen of uh, if I had met the man from what I've read, I would assume he was greasy and sleazy and couldn't be trusted around the kids. And when I make the decision about somebody, it doesn't matter what they are going to do anyway, because I've chosen it for them. And that's how I do it. You know, that's, I make my decisions quickly and based on 
the available information I have, and then I stand my freaking ground and don't bend and go back and forth. And Tesla was like that, because um, what Edison did was hired him to do a job, and he promised him the freaking moon, and when it came time to pay him, he said, well, I'm not going to do that. So, he went to digging ditches to make a living rather than work in the science field for a period of time. Hmm. Uh, and Grimner said, if you didn't hear a lighter during the show, it wasn't Flash doing the show. <laughs> hey, Mike, yeah, the spark, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think it changes me any. I'm still the same person all the time. Just uh, prefer to smoke. I don't know. You ask the status all about it. They give you a, a, an opinion to, for you to remember. I'll tell you. So let me um, let me throw. The, I think I'll throw the Tesla link into the uh, notes tonight as well, Grimner. Hmm. We'll be having a kind of a strange twenty percent off program, I suppose. Uh, but none, nonetheless, hey, we're, we do this for free, people. Like Mary says. You know, so what do you want? <laughs> oh, speaking of doing it for free. You know what? I did it again. I had uh, copied a, uh, <laughs> I'd copied the, the uh, donate button for RLM. And when I went to go retrieve it, it had expired, Grim, <laughs> on, the, on the link. Can you do me one more time so I can actually post it and get it? Then I'll, I'll have a copy I could retrieve from the, uh, it'll be on this uh, notes. I know how to do that part, but I can't seem to save one for the world. I don't know what's wrong. I'm broke. Somebody, I think I bumped my head again. I'm not positive, <laughs> but it uh, could have happened. I could have happened. You don't know. Now. You guys think you got problems? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys, you, all you Americans out there that don't love me no more because I, I bash America. But, you know, but I don't bash where I'm at. But fuck it. It's still a fucking government. I just think that, wow, they're a lot nicer to me here. And if that's insulting, I, I'm sorry. But I was born in a place that was like this. And it turned into a jail or <laughs> something. I don't know what to call it. Anyway. So, for your comedic pleasure this evening, folks and folkettes out there in Radio Land, <laughs> tonight I have a little treat for you from our friends in Canada. And this little bit <laughs> thing goes like this. Bank of Canada urges fans to stop spocking their $5 notes. Spocking. There's a new phrase to enter the Trek vocabulary, but what does spocking refer to? It seems that the Canadian $5 bill is just perfect for, with a little subtle messaging changing into an image of <laughs> the USS Enterprise legendary first officer. Dangerous minds take a look at this mini phenomenon, which seems to be working its way through their $5 notes faster than a cargo hold full of trivels eat their way through a consignment of quadrotrical kale. <laughs> Bank of Canada is pleading with Star Trek fans to stop spocking its $5 bills. Since Leonard Nimoy's death, Canadian folks have been spocking, all, spocking the hell out of the $5 bills that features a portrait of Canada's 7th Prime Minister, Sir Wilfred Laurier. Sir Wilfred now sports, on certain bills at least, pointy ears, the signature Vulcan haircut, and eyebrows, and Spock's mantra, long live and prosper. And the Bank of Canada, while not being exactly thrilled with these actions, do not what do make clear that Spocking isn't illegal. <laughs> However, there are important reasons why it should not be done. Writing on a banknote may interfere with the security features and in Reduces its lifespan. Hmm. Markings on a note may also prevent it from being accepted in a transaction. Furthermore, the Bank of Canada feels that writing and markings on banknotes are inappropriate 
as they are a symbol of our country and a source of national pride. <laughs> you do have to wonder what Trek's most famous Canadian William Shatner would think about all this. Let us know what you think Kirking would entail. <laughs> okay, Kirking. Oh, I don't think so, buddy. I ain't going to Kirk anything. Not today, anyway. But uh, on this epic 4th, 4th, I tell you, of July. And is it a coincidence to any of you that it's, you know, you spell it one way, but you say it like this. I'm going to type it. Ah, there you go. We are in the month of July. Go figure. Mm -hmm. And are you bowing and praying to your masters? I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. I wouldn't. But being one of them, I hope it works out for me. Doesn't look like it will, but hey, it could happen. And then if the Jews win and enslave everybody like they're saying they're gonna, I'm gonna go, see, look, I'm one of you guys. See, see the nose, see the cock? Yeah, yeah, nose, cock, get it, Jew? And hope they let me in the club. But uh, I don't think it's gonna really ever come to that. It could, but there's uh, always an opportunity for... Uh, change and you know while all these other crazy people are out there you know begging the government to stop doing shit to them they need to gather and figure out a way that's going to work <clears throat> oh national pride because spock was gay was he really man what fuck oh well i guess uh give me a second here Well, that was heartbreaking. Hmm. Another one down in history. Come, okay. Is are you just saying that, Mike, or is that really true? Okay. He says Huss says his wife makes anti-smoking public service announcements. His wife. I don't know who he is. Maybe he's talking about. Because <laughs> I was talking about the $5 bill in Canada being spocked. Hmm. And it turned to all that. But in the meantime, let's see what else. What other interesting little things? Well, I was kind of hinting around about Tesla. Because uh, there's just a lot to know about the guy. There was more to him than... Uh, hmm. Well, he was a strange... Uh, individual he didn't care for people very much i mean not like a hmm, more like he preferred his own company over ours than anything else and from what i saw in the film and what i've read he had aversion to uh, actual physical contact he was not pleased with people handling him or being handled and it also read that uh had a stack of like a dozen cloth napkins to clean his hands with while he ate a meal. I mean, the guy was uh, definitely, the way I look at this, it's like a nutcase guy, right? That man is living on a mental reality that's just different than the rest of us. Okay, so because of that, these other people, they see things and they hear things that we don't see and hear. So those nut jobs must be crazy. And, uh, you know, then we do the, the decent thing and kick them out in the street and make them uh, live in a park because there's no way to uh, take care of that problem through government or hospitals or help. No, no, no. You get billionaires out there sucking up all the freaking money, whatever that is, and live in this illusion with this debt, right? And they do nothing. They do nothing back for anybody compared to the wealth that they claim to to uh, accumulate. You know what they do back for people is very minimal. Now there's an actor that's got a good reputation about I forget the kid that did the Matrix, and he supposedly is given a whole shitload, millions and millions of dollars away to charity and this, that, and the other. But they don't tell you. <coughs> cool. 
Whoa. Anyway, what they don't tell you, he's got a motorcycle company that sells motorcycles to the wealthy. You know, started at like half a million dollars, 400 and something thousand for a bike. So, the guy isn't, you know, completely ignorant. He's just really probably like, um, I guess how I would look at it is how much you have is really not, it's not all that important. It's important to uh, other people, but to the individual. Whoa. To the individual, I wonder. Because, of course, I think a little differently than the majority say. <laughs> but, well, there's an art to life that goes beyond status beliefs and, you know, um, documents and paperwork and all that crap. Because I grew up when you didn't have to prove anything. All you had to do is be able to fulfill the promise you made. So if I would go to a job and tell them, yeah, I know how to do that, all I had to do was show them I could do it. And I, I've told this story before. And the best way to always ensure that I could do the job they wanted, the way they wanted me to do it, was to get them to show me. And I'd say to them, well, you know, I got my own way to do this, but if you show me how you want it done specifically so I don't fuck anything up, you know, that'll save both of us trouble. And it almost always would go, yeah, you got a point. Well, I like it done like this and show me what they wanted. And if they didn't, then there's no excuse. And if you fuck something up, you offered in the first place. So there, hmm. so simple things like that to, are to me, but seem to be complicated to other folks. Not everybody, but some of the uh, jobs that I was looking at didn't require brain surgeons. <laughs> the market the market for what I was chasing in, in when I was young was not uh, it was not coveted uh, but I, I did look like I, I got out of high school at, at like 15 and a half and then I went back to get my driver's license then I quit again so when I was 18 just at the um, I just turned old enough to get a, a real job working for the man so my dad got me uh, on the line over at Ford and there I went and it was such a wow it was to tell to tell people about it today would they drool and it went like this I worked 10 hours on Monday and 10 hours on Friday and eight hours on Saturday but Anything over eight hours and anything on a Saturday was overtime. So even though I only worked 28 hours a week, I got paid for 10 of it in overtime on on top of the already, well, what a wage. So uh, when I was 18, I was making that from Ford. <clears throat> and then I found out about selling petroleum hose equipment. So... You know, I'm not a stranger to physical labor. I'm not a stranger to uh, finance or business. I just don't like it. It's so uh, deceptive. You know, you can't really uh, earn money out there in the financial sales thing. If you told people the truth, you have to have reasons for them to buy your shit. And those reasons, <laughs> you're selling them those reasons. That's why they're buying your shit. You know, because if you buy 100,000 bottles of this Coca-Cola, you'll sell this and make yourself a nice hefty profit. And here we are. And people on the buying side of this, they don't slow down long enough to take a look at how these things are done to us so that we can get together and try to get them to slow down or stop. Because if it doesn't, it does look like a violence because of Portland, I think. Portland seems to be like softening and the more you see of something the less it affects you you're not so shocked you know the first car accident you see in the morning well that's gonna shock you might even bring up your bacon and eggs but the one you see at 10 o'clock well you just saw one so okay but the one you see at 11:15, oh that that's three 
And as you go through the day, the more you see, the less it affects you. That's how I look at that. So, hmm. I don't, I don't know. Maybe um, how things affect people is so individual. Now nah, it can't be that individual, to a degree, individual, but not, not like day and night individual. Like me and Cirque, see the things that we see day and night on don't even matter <laughs> to us. Well, they might matter to her, but I don't, I don't give a shit. And that's usually my stand on the globe or gravity, shit like that. So, how something is explained, you know, to prove what it is and all that, that, I don't give a shit. <laughs> the, the things that we waste our time uh, proving and disproving in reality is, compared to what we should be doing, is not important. But what we should be doing not enough folks are in tune with what we should be doing to to do anything <laughs> so we're stagnant sitting here watching the kids all run around bumping into each other like a bunch of drug addicts because you know big pharma <laughs> big pharma pretty much has taken hostage everybody it can get its greasy paws on if you're if you're on a medication right now, you're you're a victim of big pharma, in my opinion. But then I'm one of those weirdos, you know, the outside people. And I say just, you know, leave it up to life, so to speak. And if life wanted me to uh, not be here anymore, then that's what life would do. I don't I don't worry about tomorrow because I'm in today. Mm. I have a hard time with my wife. She needs to tell me, oh, I got to do this tomorrow, or do this, and I I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what's going on right now, and you're into tomorrow, because it, then if she doesn't tell me, and then, okay, you didn't tell me. Yeah, I did tell you. You just didn't want to hear it. So we've got that to go back on. It's my choice at the time. And uh, See, when you're responsible for the bonehead crap that you might do in your normal day, and uh, you make up for it, do it, do something else better, so you're not good at this, you're good at that. Mm. Life is, uh, mm. it's very interesting to me how uh, how easy it is to look down on shit and be better than stuff, so you can cheapen life. That's how that works. Yeah. I'm better than you because I'm from this bit of dirt. Look at my bit of paper. Woo, woo, woo. Listen to my accent. Woo, woo, woo. I'm important. I can do whatever I want. And there's a certain amount of truth that goes along with that myth, that story, that, uh, that illusion. And it carries to today, too, because they're saying uh, the last radio show. I met a new guy at the bar, and he'd been to America, and he wanted to talk in English, and he was really struggling. I mean, he didn't, he probably hadn't used his English in a while, but I understood what he was asking and what he was saying. We figured things out. Let's just slow down a little bit, and we're sitting there drinking beer, so you can always blame the beer, but uh, I think it's my experience with folk in general is it's not about what they're fucking saying that really matters. That's incidental, Clarice, actually. What they're doing is they want to be heard. <clears throat> you know, They want to be recognized for their humanity. It's really a simple uh, equation, I suppose. It's like a math equation with words, You know, like the uh, Admiralty Court, how they do it. If people say this, they can only go in so many directions from what they start with. That it's it's how we keep people honest, you know. And uh, it, a man that's not ashamed to tell me I can't remember the streets or the cities. I have no memory of, but I was so pissed. <laughs> he was drinking, and he was just so excited because his version of it, the people took real good care of him while he was visiting in Los Angeles. So. When you, uh, when I have encounters like that in public, it's, I mean, people kind of put up with me. You know, uh, the ones that 
I don't think anybody's got a grudge against me not trying to speak Danish. Because if you go 20 miles the other direction, it's just like being at home in the States, going from state to state. It's a different dialect. Different tribe runs this area, different tribe from that area, and it's 6 million people. It's not huge, but it's still a lot. And uh, just like the States, you go from North Carolina to California and you hear two different voices, two different languages. And uh, I'm from L.A. and I, Vinny's from, I guess if you want to put it, I, he's got roots or relatives in North Carolina too, but he's in Arkansas. So he's got that southern draw shit going on in his voice, but we understand each other. Now, sir... Uh, there was a guy on WT. He had a southern accent and sir couldn't understand a word he said when he was uh, on the phone, on the uh, Skype. Not uh, Didn't understand why she couldn't understand. I could understand. But see, there's that why I don't go out of my way to learn the foreign language is sir can understand uh, English in the right in the right uh, accent, I suppose would be the word for it. I could speak too quickly for her to follow me, if you know, if I wanted to. I could do one of those, you know, jumble shit things with words. And but I try not to. I keep my I keep myself under, you know, uh, verbal control because words are wow. Hmm. Words are weird. I think they're like paint. You know, you can pick them up whenever you want to, and the, and, and depending on on what light of day you present that word on, it can mean a different thing from one moment to the next. What words you surround that word with. And uh, today on the on the chat, what have we got going on? Beatles laughing at us. And, Huzz slapping them on the back for laughing on us. Uh, and goobers, West Coast rocking and rolling with quakes. Yeah, earthquakes. Uh, he says, got an earthquake update link on the RLM. Ah, oh, well, you guys are reading it can see that. But I'm looking at the chat just for a minute here. See what I can do with it. Probably nothing. But we are gathered on this 4th of July to... Uh, <laughs> swap stories and take prisoners. What are we doing? What is your goal? You know, are your goals huge? My goals are really small. My goals are so small. My list of necessity is so minuscule that uh, I can never not meet it. <laughs> Well, I'm only going to not meet it once, but, I mean, that's all it's going to take. And it's so simple. My goal in my day is to wake up. And anything that happens after that, well, it could be uh, taken however I want to take it at any given time for any given reason. But remembering that, first and foremost, is the hard part. But I know it. So, hmm. you know, at least I'm on the way because uh, people can be cruel. Ooh, I get accused of it all the time. And I'm just playing around with words. And I don't think nothing of what I'm saying. But the person listening, hey, you can't talk to me like that. And I, and in my mind, I'm thinking, talk to you like what? Uh, oops, did I, did I offend? <laughs> and then I see it. And then I pay more attention maybe or uh, take it more seriously. And I can see where, yeah. But to take offense to something... It's your own choice. I mean, Jesus. Uh, wow. I don't know. I'm kind of lost in you know bouncing around on the thought train tonight. Um, but let's see. And I asked him. Let me see. Did you, let me look on the link here. What I needed was, hey, Goober, somebody that's on the RLM Moose Girl, can you give me a, a copy of the donate link for me to put in my uh, in my notes tonight so I can. Make that a thing, because if somebody posted, I missed it. And now I've got uh, I've got the RLM chat open, so I can't miss it. I will sit here and watch like a hawk, because I'm going to put it in my notes. 
by God and country, make Graham some marijuana money so he can go to Barbados and watch the girls swim while he smokes a big hookah. But, uh, oh, I didn't make it to the swimming pool this year. But Cirque's got three weeks of uh, um, holiday, whatever, vacation. Starting Monday. Well, she's starting Saturday, but she's got one more day of this, you know, slavitude to deal with tomorrow. And then three weeks of putting up with my happy ass, the poor thing. Ha, 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 ha. At my beck and call to make me a sandwich and coffee. <laughs> Abusing the old wife on her vacation. I wonder if that makes me an American. I wonder what a Danish guy would do. <laughs> I don't know. You know, uh, I don't really think there's any government or country way to look at shit like that. But people do. You know? We're just playing three card money. You know, it's got so little to do with reality. And everything to do with what you're willing to believe and tolerate. <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess my limit is Denmark. I'll tolerate that. Okay. Yeah, this link doesn't expire. Oh, thank you, Grimner. I'm copying it right now. Because I know I, I make such a, a problem out of doing the Internet because uh, I'm slow at it. Terrible. And my wife, she went upstairs, or I'd have just, she would have grabbed the mouse and done click, click, clickety, click, click for me. But no. <laughs> anyway, so you guys got me uh, ranting like a crazy man. But what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is uh, I'm going to post in my links the donate button for Grimner. So, to, uh, my hardcore on and off from about 40 to 60 out there in BitChute and Twitter land. Because it comes up on BitChute, that, uh, the numbers. So wherever you're, I guess if you're coming in from Twitter and uh, you're listening to the, the crazy stuff that I do on the radio. If you're feeling generous, I don't do this for money. But I always uh, like to remember Grimner. And if you got a few ducats you don't need, pass them on. He'll use them to run the site and other amazing things. And the site's doing, you know, it's a, quite a quite a site too. It's, whew, it's there's more to do on it than just chat in the chat room. We got radio links, and then there's always people to talk to about what you found on your radio link. So it it's a <laughs> multitasker. It's multitaskers heaven. I'm not real good with the internet myself, but I do use it for, you know, entertainment. Now, I think I got that. When, uh, when I send you my, uh, my notes tonight, Grimner, I'll stick around down here. I'll try to get them done quick. Make sure that uh, I want to do that so I can put it in every episode of my stuff and not have to say anything, but... Uh, Ah, it's always fun to uh, make fun of it because money is what runs every freaking thing that we do. Even though it's pretend money, it's still, you know, debt. But still money of some, some kind of trade, some kind of commerce. And there's just not enough people that want to change this mess we're in to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, still, they're trading $5 trillion a day and the five biggest banks on earth by a god and country. And uh, no, they're not. There's no such thing as five trillion anything. These land Jews made it all up. And you're all going to see once you pull the curtain back and expose the wizard for what he truly is. A wizard. <laughs> and you see it. Then there's no going back. You, you can't undo that. You'll never go, oh, well, Trump, Trump wasn't so bad. You'll never say that again. No, all you got to do is just pull the curtain back. I recommend it to anybody. If you're in doubt <laughs> about about the federal government being there for you and your safety and your well-being, why don't you look up some SCOTUS rulings about police <laughs> or... Oh, my God. Wait a minute. I think I had one. Uh, SCOTUS ruling that I wanted to... Yeah, I think I do have it. I might read this... 
I might read a SCOTUS rune because uh, it was special. Let me see. There it is. I forgot where I put it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to 20% off. I'm Flash, and I'm going to read the U.S. Supreme Court just declared that the government owns your blood and can take it without your consent. And I think this was grim through this on the uh, RLM earlier. I'm going to repost it anyway. But I thought I stole this, but I can't remember who I stole it from. I think it was Grimner. It'll show me if it was. Anyway, so the link goes something. Whoops, what have I done? Uh, oh, I got a message. Uh, okay, yeah. Hold on, I'm going to leave that until after the show. I'm going to go back to the chat. Okay. Hold on, let me cough up one here. Hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen out there in Radio Land, let's take a cruise down this lake. And it says uh, Natural News. Uh, who's it credited to? Uh, Wednesday, July the 3rd, 2019 by Ethan... Huff. <laughs> oh, what a name. Ethan Huff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, there you go. Made me laugh. Natural news. Further eroding Americans' Fourth Amendment rights, the Supreme Court has ruled that police officers can now forcibly and without warrant draw blood from unconscious drivers whom they suspect of operating a motor vehicle while drunk. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court ruled in the case of Mitchell v. State of Wisconsin that an unconscious driver whom a cop deems to be intoxicated constitutes an emergency situation. Wow. Uh, whereby that driver's Fourth Amendment rights are immediately suspended and no warrant is necessary to draw that driver's blood, even when there's an opportunity to obtain a warrant. Wow, these people just don't... Whew. Okay, uh, back to the story. The case involves a man named Gerald, Gerald Mitchell. I was expecting a foreign name, and it was an American one, <laughs> who back in 2013 had driven his van to the shore of Lake Michigan and proceeded to consume 40 pharmaceutical pills and a mixture of vodka and soda. Yeah, he should have used gin. When police were called, they arrived on the scene and found Mitchell walking along the lake away from his van. Police officers proceeded to give Mitchell a sobriety test, which indicated that he had a blood alcohol level of 0.24. They took Mitchell into custody and placed him in a holding cell, where, after observing that he was on the verge of falling asleep or passing out, decided to take him to a nearby hospital to have his blood drawn. Upon arriving at the hospital, Mitchell was unconscious which meant he was unable to verbally consent to have his blood drawn. So police officers simply read Mitchell his rights while he was unconscious, citing Wisconsin's implied consent law as justification. Later, when Mitchell was being prosecuted by the state, he pushed to have the blood test results suppressed because he never actually consented to having his blood taken in the first place. After losing in the Wisconsin State Court, Mitchell took his case to the Supreme Court, which unfortunately sided with lower courts in justifying Mitchell's blood draw as being dependent upon exigent circumstances. There's never a lawful reason to override the Fourth Amendment. An amicus brief, oh, amica, amicus brief, yeah, an amicus brief filed by the Rutherford Institute argues that merely driving on a state-owned road does not as the Supreme Court suggests, constitute implied consent to sobriety tests, breathalyzers, and blood draws. None of these things should ever be used as a means to bypass the Fourth Amendment, which clearly states that 
welcome. See, they mean they give you all this crap, and when they physically do is nothing compared to what they talk. About. Well, they talk bait and switch. Come on, you know you get sold a a steak, and you're ending up with you know cat shit. <laughs> And people are all complaining, man. I have yet to see anybody wake up and go, hey, damn it, it's so wonderful, these politicians. I just I just love politicians today. Today's love me some politician day. No. No, we all agree that. The politicians in the game, what are they doing? They're trying to make money. These people don't give a shit about us. If they gave a shit about us, they'd stay poor. <laughs> And they'd struggle. They wouldn't freaking go to, to live off our backs, you know, because they know how we should live. But that's what politicians do. That's what's wrong with them. <laughs> they think they know shit. You know, you give you give a guy a suit or a, give a woman a dress and some high heels, and the next thing you know, they they think they're important. And no, your your financial status does not make you an intelligent being. <laughs> it just means that you've accumulated some you know, questionable wealth. Anyway, back to my epic tale about stuff. Now, the right of the people to be secure in the person's house papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. All of those freedoms we cherish, the ones enshrined in the Constitution, the ones that affirm our right to due process, privacy, body, bodily integrity, the right to not have police seize our property without a warrant or search and detain us without probable cause. A amount to nothing when the government and its agents are allowed to disagree with, with uh, disregard those prohibitions on government overreach at will, says John W. Whitehead, president of the Rutherford Institute and author of the book Battlefield America, the War on the American People. Hmm. What this ruling makes clear is that our so-called, when they say that, it's over, Fourth Amendment rights have been reduced to technicalities in the face of the government's ongoing power grabs. According to reports, 28 states, other, other states have similar implied consent laws to Wisconsin, meaning they too can legally override the Fourth Amendment for exigent circumstances. For related news about the government's continued overreach of power, which violates our constitutional rights as Americans, check out tyranny.news. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Well, that was pretty... Well, I think Grimm posted it earlier, and then I <clears throat> I snatched a copy because I thought I might be in reading mood tonight, and I was, but uh, that's... I don't know. I, it comes and goes. I think... Therefore, I am. But apparently, you know, the scales of, of uh, judgment <laughs> prevail. Uh, and people have ideas. That's probably where all the problems come from, is when we have all these ideas. You know, we get smart, and we know stuff. And the stuff that we know, <laughs> I think some of it would be better off left unknown. But I could be wrong. But I'm not. I'm not wrong for me. I could be wrong for you. The stuff that you know, hey, that's important shit, man. Because <laughs> it's the shit you know, and that's how I think we are, people. Everybody's, you know, the same. But we don't want to say, hey, we're all the same, because then you can't be an in in individual anymore. Hmm. We're in a circus. We're in a loop. We're going around and round and round and round, and it uh, it doesn't end, but it, it, it's never it's it's never boring, you know. It, the changes in life are so subtle. Uh, I've been watching my plants grow for months, and uh, I started with 
flowers, you know, flowers and trees. And then now I've got to the where I can take an avocado seed. And uh, I've got four of them I've attempted. And all three out of the four of them, I started one in a, a week ahead of the other three. But three of them have uh, roots and are coming out uh, sprouting through the top too. The first two are looking pretty healthy and pretty strong. The second two, oddly, are looking like some kind of freakish Frankenstein experiment. But the thing I'm learning about plants is if there's buoyancy in the plant, it's alive. So no matter what it looks like, isn't that's not what I'm after. I, I'm after a healthy looking thing, but if it's got buoyancy and it still doesn't look appealing to me, I'm going to keep trying to, to keep it alive to see what it'll become. <laughs> so, you know, like this Dr. Frankenstein with plants lately. And every time my mo uh, my mother-in-law comes over, she brings more plants. I mean, she's a plant crazy person too. So, you know, I, I've shown an interest and it makes the house better to have a, have a variety of plants around too for food sources and looking at sources and uh I've seen Cirque go to the windowsill to get uh, my what basil leaves. I had this huge basil tree thing. It lasted for about a year. And I bought it at the grocery store. And just It was one of the organic plants. Blah, you take it home and you, you just break them off the plant. Well, I kept, kept some to try to grow, and they just grew huge. It was amazing. The stalks were turning brown, starting to, to be like wood. And then I finally gave up and let the thing die. <laughs> I think I, I kept it along too. I kept it alive too long, and that's what all the brown was the age of the plant. So now we're we're trying to avocados. And we got some other stuff out in the backyard. I've already forgot what we what we planted it. But the day that I planted it, I just took the labels off and tossed them somewhere and went, "Oh no!" <laughs> she says, well, "Which one is which?" I went, "Uh oh." I thought you knew. <laughs> so when they grow, you know, as they develop, you can tell a, a tomato from a cucumber. So it was just a matter of waiting out. So the leaves got a certain size so you could tell what kind of plant it was. But that's how bad working with me can be is directions. Nah, let's encourage the fight. I, I don't want any direction. I just want to go wherever I want to go and do whatever I want to do. And this, as you get older, the expectations of whatever that is surely drop. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a threat to the society I live amongst. You know, just because I'm, I'm older, you know, being of a maybe not advanced, but I'm getting up there now. I'll be hitting the 60, so. Hmm. But I don't feel it. I, I just know I look it. I guess it's you can recognize it if you see me. Because he's got gray, a gray beard now. But I don't feel it. So, I'm going to celebrate my 4th of July <laughs> with my American peers and people, the bots and bodies of the reallibertymedia.com. And, you know, although I don't take all the, the state crap all that seriously, what I do take serious is people that, like Grimm, that go out of their way to put a freaking website together so that if you got a beef with the state, you can go talk about it with Beetle. And he'll probably, yeah, I know what you mean. Or Goober or Vinny or who else is on right now? I'm Grimner's on. And Anti. And is that you, Vinny, again? Yeah. There's a few guys chitter chattering on the RLM right now. But. I've tried to um, tell the good side of the reallibertymedia.com chat room is whenever somebody has a situation come up, what if it be on the computer problem to a uh, toothache, somebody on the internet site, the chat site, will see your, you know, your request, whatever your question is. Yeah, no, huh, Grim? going to be 6,000 years old, by God, country. I'm going to build me an ark. What's a cubit? Uh, <laughs> anyway. Ah, this chocolate one smelled like chocolate. That's pretty good. 
So, sex bots and vanilla shakes for everybody. I don't, I think, you know, what's wrong with everything is that we've been you know, prohibited and banned into uh, submission. Because when you got all this freaking freedom and you watch it all dissipate with all this prohib, you know, prohibit, prohibit, ban, stop. And it's, and it really started huge with the, the pot thing. Marijuana, cannabis, Mary Jane, weed. So they, they took a whole whole world hostage again, one more time, making the best plant on planet illegal. And now they're fighting it in court. There's they know it. It's over. There's no reason. So what do they do? They use medicinal properties to, you know, keep the water muddy. So that people will just be in enough doubt to trust that. We need government intervention because, well, you can't trust people and they might do shit. Well, the people that are the ones doing the shit <laughs> are the government. Hmm. I don't trust what I've seen of all this legalizing pot. I think it's a terrible, uh, it's a terrible mistake. Not that because of the government intervention does it leads me to not trust that uh, these people have your best interest at heart they got on, on their mind is high prices and returns and repeat customers and for all these years we've been told oh how you know demonized weed for 80 years and the truth was out there anyway but they kept stepping on all the truth about it so here we are and now, it, like in a fight, like in an argument, about, uh, an argument about something that is so black and white and obvious as the government and the churches lied about hemp and cannabis. Nobody has said that. I mean, if they're going to say it, they're going to say it like I do, small to 50 or 60 people. You're not going to see this on the, you know, on the mainstream shit. Where all the crowds are at, you know, Facebook and Twitter and all that. What you're going to get there is what the state allows. That's the way I see this. I mean, from what I've been a little, I spent a little bit more time on minds, I think, than anywhere else lately. If I'm going to read links and look for stuff and crap like that. Um, it's between the real liberty media and minds. And then I'm trying to get uh, make some time side for realliberty.org and if you guys on the real liberty media are listening to me I will say this one more time tonight need to go over to realliberty.org and give it a little uh, attention give Grimm some love on the RL on the RLO site and uh, you know give him some traffic I suppose. I'm going to do it. I've been doing it. I try to do it. And uh, if he's still looking for some help with uh, some kind of maintenance to keep that site clicking so it doesn't slow down and drag and not take information and whatnot, I'm still available. And Cirque's going to be home for three weeks. So if you can explain it to her, she can always explain it to me. She retains this stuff because that's, you know, part of her work. <laughs> Me, I'm just a old guy with a computer. <laughs> it's different. It's not the same world for me, I don't think. And you know that age difference thing. Uh, she doesn't flaunt the computer knowledge and you know hurt my feelings with it or make fun of me. It's just obvious that she's so much better at it than I am. And it's it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. It's you know not. I guess it amuses me so. And it justifies my lack of interest, just like the language. What am I gonna? Who am I gonna speak Danish to? And what about nothing? I'll never learn to speak that good. It's not that kind of language. So I'm staying out of that fight. I'm just gonna stick with this crap that I know. Hmm. And he says, you know, Flash. This is from Grimner. You can blog on RLM as well as RLO. No, I did not know that. But I, I've just had had uh, input uh, glitches with the with the software didn't want to cooperate with me. So 
I backed up, but I, I didn't know. I see. I you got to show me shit and point it out. I'm sure show me, because that's what she knows. <laughs> computer stuff. I just don't think. I didn't think about blogging on the RLM. But uh, the other day, it's what I did for a show. Is I I read a shitload of my blogs from the RLO, and uh, outside of not being prepared and organized and not being capable of handling the software, you know, to navigate properly. I, I didn't do too bad for, you know, an, on the, it was a off the cuff kind of a thing where I just, yeah, I think I'll do this. <laughs> and like tonight, I'm just doing whatever comes to mind. If something strikes me, I'll read it. Ah, speaking of, if something strikes me, I'll read it. Folks, if I got a real 4th of July for you, <laughs> This is about your president, Mr. Trump, the great big orange guy, the one that everybody's terrified of. And it, <laughs> I'm going to read, read you a little link about Mr. Donald Trump. And it goes like this. It's called Trump Slaps. I don't know if this is true or not either. I, so if you need to, you might need to prove it. But it's on a thing called Zero Hedge. And it's written by that Tyler Durden group. Okay, it's called Trump Slaps 400% Tariff on Vietnamese Steel. <laughs> and it's a good story. I read a little bit of it. I, I was kind of entertained because I would try to do shit like this if I was in business to beat America myself. But they got caught, so you got to pay the price. And this is what happens when you get caught cheating, I guess, basically, is what it is. Uh, it's not stealing anything. Well, yeah, it is stealing, technically. But you're just trying to cheat, you know, cheat your way around this to get this done. And business, when there's no victim, it looks a lot differently than if somebody just put a gun to your head and said, give me your money. <laughs> now, it goes like this. If you thought the world was safe from further trade war escalation after Trump vowed to postpone slapping tariffs on... 300 billion plus of Chinese goods. Think again. During an interview with Maria Bartimoromo <laughs> last week, President Trump accused Vietnam of being almost the single worst abuser of everybody and asserted that Vietnam takes advantage of us even worse than China. <laughs> The, the sudden turn in Trump's rhetoric contrasted with the praise he offered Vietnam back in February for trying to reduce its trade surplus with the U.S., according to the Office of the Trade Rep. Trade with Vietnam meant to nearly $60 billion. Though earlier this year, the Treasury Department stopped short of accusing Vietnam of manipulating its dong. For those who, who are unaware, that's the name of its currency. Yes, the dong. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> shortly, sorry, I, I had a cert moment or something. Sir, shortly after the interview reports that Trump was planning to slap tariffs on the small Southeast Na Asian nation surfaced. Now in a series of preliminary rulings. The Commerce Department is slapping 400% plus steel tariffs on Vietnam. In its ship. It would, oops, in its finding, the Commerce Department listed several steel products initially produced in South Korea and Taiwan that are then shipped to Vietnam for processing before being exported to the U.S. to circumvent anti-dumping duties. In three preliminary circumvention rulings on Vietnamese steel, the Commerce Department said certain products produced in South Korea and Taiwan were shipped to Vietnam for minor processing before being exported to U.S. as corrosion-resistant steel products and cold-rolled steel. Customs officials have been ordered to collect cash deposits at rates as high as 456.23% on imports of the steel products produced in Vietnam using material from South Korea and Taiwan. The fact that companies have been routing products through Vietnam to avoid higher tariffs has already been well documented. And let's not forget those fake Made in Vietnam stickers. 
One economist who spoke with Bloomberg said routing products through Vietnam was a no-brainer. It's not surprising companies will try to route products through country, countries such as Vietnam to dodge higher duties, said Rob Carnell, Asia-Pacific Chief Econom- Economist at Bank. It's a no-brainer, he said. You increase the cost and people are going to try and find a way to avoid it. It's human nature. Wow. Okay. That was fun. I'm, I'm done with that. That was fun. I enjoyed that. Did I post that little baby? Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> Hope I put, I'm going to put that in my notes with all the other good stuff that I was reading tonight for your reading enjoyment, folks and folkettes out there. Radio Land, I'm telling you, you lucky people. How did you get so lucky? What did you lose a lottery? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm just joking around. Stalling while I copy and paste. Because this show is uh, not in any particular order. So if I don't do it a step at a time, uh, I don't think I can reproduce the order properly. Why it's an issue tonight, I don't really know. Who is to know what makes my brain spin? Now, let's see. Ah, Okay. And we got that. And I got one more. Oh, I got one more. You guys are going to love this one. Hold on just one minute. I'm going to find a copy of this little baby. It's called... Where is it? Here. It's... Whoa, I'm a slow guy. Hold on. A slow man on the radio. But I'll get to it. Uh, All right, let me see. What did I do here? I'm looking for this German story about uh, global warming efforts from a kid. And it's pretty rude, so... Hmm. But I think I'll post the on the RLN made feed. Let me see if I can do this here quickly and quietly. And boom! Look at me go. I'm almost like a cut. I'm almost as good as Vinny at this cut and paste stuff. And this little baby is called... Germans display fuck you Greta bumper stickers to protest being lectured about global warming. Hmm. Turns out adults don't like being told by a child how to live their lives. Pretty heavy kind of accusation for some kid. I mean, I don't give these people any credibility in the first place. I hear global warming and I'm finished. The conversation's over. But there's a world out there of people that, well, they don't understand the truth from the story. So they're lost. They're going to go with what's safest. And what's safest is to go along with the, the story. And this is why. German drivers have been displaying fuck you Greta bumper stickers to protest against being lectured about global warming by a 16-year-old child. Now, if that kid was, you know, boobalicious and making uh, uh, porno or something, would be a 16-year-old woman. <laughs> Just saying. Greta Thunberg is a Swedish teen climate activist who has been heavily promoted by the establishment and was placed on the front cover of Time magazine back in May. Ingmar Renshog, founder of the nonprofit We Don't Have Time Foundation, claimed to have discovered Thunberg and used her to push climate change messaging. This has prompted accusations that the teen is being exploited Given her Asperger's obsessive compulsive disorder and selective mutism. Now, some German motorists have had enough of being lectured about their lifestyle <laughs> by a child. Over the past few weeks, numerous images of cars adorned with a bumper sticker that reads, Fuck you, Greta, have been posted to social media. Now, you know. Th- this just goes back to me and Vinny and our uh, our disagreement, our squabble about 
what's going too far. You know, some people think that you don't need to use any sense of decorum at all, ever, period. And other people, hmm, I guess they fluctuate between the two. You know, and then there's just the two sides in the middle of it. Total and complete uh, blame the other guy. Total and complete blame yourself or look at the truth one way or the other. But hmm, to be that upset about what you hear or what somebody tells you enough to put a bumper sticker on your car over it. That seems a little strange to me. I, but then, you know, I, when I was driving, I wasn't really much of a bumper sticker reader. I never figured out who the hell is reading all these bumper stickers. When you're stuck in traffic, you're sitting on top of the guy's bumper. You can't read shit. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> I always save that for the dork table. But, who beetle, now I will drink freezing cold weather. Water. Ooh, weather. <laughs> what was I thinking? I guess Beatles having a heaty, uh, heaty hot day out there in wherever Beetle Land is. I don't pay much attention. I think he's in Connecticut or something like that. Some far off place over in America, way over the water, far away where I can't see. I can only read about it on the internet webs. But, uh oh, the first knuckle is too far. What? They're talking all kinds of crazy stuff on the RLM. I can't figure it out. And Rob Works is building a beast out there for your uh, computing entertainment. Maybe he's going to come back and do some radio again. That would be kind of cool of you, Mr. Uh, shy Guy. Don't want to be all doing the radio all the time like me. Ah, come on, Rob. Do, do a radio podcast for your uh, you know people that want to hear what you got to say. In fact, I wonder why there's not more people, you know, stepping forward that have strong opinions about serious uh, topics. <laughs> you know, things that matter in your daily life, like uh, hmm, government, <laughs> religion, education, you know, politics, all those things that grab you every day and somehow invade your life. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know. I guess I just avoided all that stuff for so long that uh, it just wasn't really there. You know, uh, you'd have to be out. I'm so far outside this game; it's not believable. <laughs> then, then of course, Cirque isn't. So that kind of it changes the balance of the way things look. But I assure you, it's just because we got along. It's got you know, it's no political or. None of that shit matters to us. Maybe it matters to other people. Oh, let me see. Uh, Vinny pl had a question to me about 10 minutes ago. I didn't read it. It says, Flash, if you would please perhaps suggest people could make a small monthly donation that will add up at year's end. Hmm. Well, yeah, but... You know, it's not every. I can, can suggest that it's a good idea for people that want to do it. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I say do what you can. You know, do what you can live with, whatever's comfortable. And you know, what's comfortable? Five bucks is comfortable for one guy, and fifty bucks is comfortable for another guy. So, you know, whatever you've got that you can actually. I consider the internet uh, site like a. Um, like going to the grocery store in a sense because I use it for radio and I use it for communication and I use it for a lot of things. I've learned an incredible amount of shit off of the RLM site. So it's uh, supporting it is kind of goes hand in hand, I think. And I just think that in these times, you know, with well, <laughs> we're all living in debt, so we're passing around IOU notes. You know, take take it as seriously as you want, and if you do take it seriously, then sure, then support Grimner, not me. I no, I don't want nobody sending me shit. I don't want anybody knowing where I'm at. But uh, you know, that's life. And I'm not hiding from anyone. I just 
don't want to be walking into you in the street without a, you know being told you're coming to town. <laughs> because uh, the way we live is if you're visiting, you're the guest. You stay you know as long as you want. That's the way me and Sir Carr. We we've had a few people come by and you know nobody's been run out. Uh, but you know people stayed as long as they wanted to and then they went back to where they were you know, gonna go. And life continues for most of us so far. <laughs> I still hear from pancakes usually on Saturday when I do a dork table. And he's become uh, my number one fan on the dork table. I appreciate that, Mr. Mental Pancakes. And he visits me over on Minds.com. Oh, yeah, and that's another thing. If you guys, uh, if you don't like Minds, I understand. It's not for everybody. But if you do like Minds, I use my Flash Somebody name. <clears throat> and uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. And there's a lot of status stuff going on. So there's a good balance, in my opinion, there's a good balance to uh, the minds thing. But it's a monetary based, competitive kind of uh, Facebook light, I would say. And I don't know who they're selling out to, but, you know. The more successful you get, the more uh, interesting you are to the bigger companies that want to gobble you up and make you change. So we're doomed to that, you know. I guess the the bigger you get, the more successful you are. Is that's when uh, the message that you're putting out to the world becomes useless. And I guess the politicians are all calling off what fake news and all this shit. Well, look, fake news has been fake ever since they started telling it. It's not new that the public news is bullshit. We've been <laughs> we've been fed bullshit since day one, and uh, it started out good maybe in 1770 fucking five, but this is a little bit later down the road, and. People say some really ignorant shit like the uh, Constitution uh, needs to be brought up to date and modernized. No, it doesn't. <laughs> if you want to live by the damn thing, then you need to slow down and <clears throat> go back in time and stop getting in everybody's fucking shit before they even do anything or shooting them because they did something. That's really big right now. The cops have a, a kill list. <clears throat> Rivals the damn tr uh, Clintons, the Trumps, and who else? The Bush. Well, Bush, go, his family goes back to World War II, so they probably got a good kill list, the old Bushes. And here we are, you know, Americans with all these murdering, lying, fucking thieves in power at sitting POTUSes. And now they got this idiot that's sitting there. And. They've got people convinced that he's not part of the machine. <laughs> of course, of course he is. It's just the machine that you think you're looking at is not the machine that's running everything. <laughs> it's not being run by Trump or Pelosi or any of these idiots that they parade in front of us in Congress and all, all that. You see these morons dribbling all over their self, speaking into microphones. They got little name tags in front of them, and they read their little scripts. And half of them are playing fucking solitaire on a laptop. So, <laughs> you know, they're not even paying attention to the other people in the room that they're in. Yet, we've been conditioned to believe that that is our representation in government. And people got to know better by now. I mean... How long can you go through life, <laughs> you know, watching the wizard and believing in the wizard, and then they show you, look, there's no wizard, but you still believe that the wizard's going to, well, he'll be back. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll, you just can't see him right now because he's invisible. <laughs> he'll be back tomorrow. And I, that's how ridiculous I think that this whole thing is seen. You know, just, instead of where are you now? You know, what's going on today? It's always the end of the month, I owe this. The end of the month, I owe that. Blah, blah, blah. That That's what we've basically become. 
through the uh, the insistence and the great guidance of Mother State, they herded us into these uh, prisons, open air prisons, basically. So, on Fourth of July, I'm ending my uh, twenty percent off podcast with a little ditty about how I don't think that uh, modern day life is much different than an open air prison and and I say that because chemtrails fluoride all the crap they, these idiots want to globalize they need to do is back the fuck off and just leave each other alone you know think smaller quit quit trying to sell a, a billion dollars worth of fucking sneakers that were made by you know a, a bunch of uneducated women in a foreign country that you don't have to pay very well. So, there's the crux of the problem, is that the, the shit that we support financially is if if we knew, if each person had to look at how these things were manufactured and then buy them, I don't know, maybe some people wouldn't give a shit. Maybe that's the point, is uh, the, the level of concern about how you get the things you get is so low. <laughs> People are more interested in going to the fucking moon and exploring and r- raping the moon for its resources. That's what's hot now. Huh. Not fix this planet that we're on. Hey, let's go fuck with space and see what we can do out there. And, you know, to end the show, I'm going to tell you this. I think most of that's just a lot of crap. If they proved it to you, that's wonderful. They don't prove anything to me except... The government wants total control over us where we are now. So make your chains and you know your uh, barbed wire or your rope as comfortable as you can in this uh, <laughs> in this life, this freedom that we live in. I have. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I've admitted. Oh yeah, I got married. I can't go anywhere. I promised Cirque I'd be here for. Her. There you go. So you know. Life takes you, in my opinion, life takes you where uh, what's best for you is there if you look for it. And I found something that I can consider what's best for me. There you go. And it's best for her. <laughs> so we got to balance. And uh, in 20% off land, I think that's better than uh, a lot of people complain about life. And I don't. I got a good life. And I hope the best for people, not the worst. I just have a terrible sense of humor and a very wicked, dark sense of sarcasm. <laughs> but tomorrow night... Oh, wait, wait. Vinny, are you doing a Ponder Gander or are you done with the radio for the week? I'll stall long enough to maybe get an answer out of Vinny. Well, I'll say this. If Vinny is doing radio, he'll be doing it tomorrow at 1 o'clock on the East Coast. And it will be called a Ponder Gander, I'm pretty sure. And then after that, on Wednesday and Friday... 7 o'clock on the East Coast. You've got Graham Z does the Rock Chair podcast. And 11 o'clock on Friday. Ha-ha. Grimner and Moose Girl do Freaker's Ball. And then they chitter-chatter about, yeah, like I did tonight, chitter-chatter about the events going on in life and whatnot. But Grimner plays live music on, uh, on the show, but it's not recorded to the podcast. So if you uh, if you like music, if that's one of the best things you got going, check them out. And then Saturday at noon on the East Coast, uh, I'll come. Wait a second. Yeah, noon on the East Coast, Dork Table Time Saturday. Maybe I get me a hostage. It sounds like Graham Z might be uh, hanging around. We're not sure yet. And then Sunday morning, Grimner cranks up the blues in the morning. Then we play some trivia. Till about 3 o'clock on the West Coast in the U.S. And Hal Anthony does From Behind the Woodshed. Where he whips out a little can of whoop-ass. And shows it to the crickets. And watches them scatter. But uh, it's a lot of important stuff. If if you're into how to solve the legal problem, Hal's way works. And then Monday night, 7 o'clock on the East Coast. You got Grimner does uh, grim leftovers for your you know 
audio pleasures. And what that is is the stuff that they played music on couldn't get to on Friday night. Picks it up on Monday. And he does these little reruns with the leftovers. And then Tuesday, I got the damnedest show in the world. I came up with a 2 a.m. on uh, Tuesday morning, I guess. There you go. Tuesday morning, 2 a.m. on the east coast of the United States, which is 8 o'clock in the morning my time, which in the first place I thought was going to be perfect, but like usual, I I misjudge things. But it works out good for me, but uh, got nobody on, on the RLM that's on is too interested in listening to me rant at 8 in the morning, Denmark time. <laughs> so Grimner puts it out on uh, Twitter, and I picked up some BitChute fans out there. So thanks a lot, Grim, for the exposure and doing all that crazy stuff. And <laughs> thanks a lot to the people that pick up the show on BitChute. And on Wednesday, Gramsci, 7 o'clock on the East Coast, uh, Rocket Share Podcast. <laughs> Got all tongue twisted. And then Thursday, I'll be back at 2 o'clock on east coast with uh 20 percent off so we'll call that a, a show for you guys tonight and thanks a lot for playing along and all the help you've been everybody that posted links that i steal from you and read about on the internet if you ever want something read and you want people to know that you posted it post it with a message on the rlm and say hey flash read this and say it's from me and i'll do that uh, thanks a lot, everybody, and you guys have a good one. Good night.